Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. I woke up this morning and got into a conversation with a sister in Christ online in the comment section. And I don't like putting out videos back to back because we just put out a study, a, one of our large studies, our weekly large studies where you get your Bible open, we turn here, we turn there, you pause the video, you read it in more depth, and we make sure that this is our final authority, and we learn from this how to live a life of Christ. So we did a study called Acknowledge Him in All Thy Ways, Aaron, Part 3. So if you come across this video, we did that video before, and it's a two hours. It probably should have been a little bit longer. I kind of pushed it a little bit, but, um, but back to this right here. Uh, Sister in Christ was telling me that she says, Praise God, the Lord showed me this verse today to show that we cannot save ourselves by our faith. John 1.13 which were born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And I just wanted to talk to you guys because I push this and some of the enemies out there that hate the true plan of salvation, of repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, confess both in prayer and ask God to save them. And afterwards, God looks at the heart. When you've done all those, God looks at the heart and God does the saving. Okay, and I've said before, prayer doesn't save you. But if you don't, I'm not prayer, if we're, we're prayer, yeah, but I need to go to the first step. It's early in the morning. Forgive me, brother, says Christ. God just put it on my heart to really get this out. Repentance. I need to slow down a little bit, too. Repentance. Okay. Repentance doesn't save you. But if you don't repent, you'll never get saved by God. You'll never find salvation. God's saving grace. Belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross does not save you. I've said this before, and I think I said it in this video where this sister of Christ is talking about it. doesn't save you, but if you don't do it, you'll never find God's saving grace. Confessing both in prayer. We use the verses. Let's go back to repentance. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrows of the world worketh death. Um... 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. You have to believe how Christ died for you. How? He died for your sins. For our sins, but for your personal sins that you sinned against Him. Repentance comes into play again. But how He died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and was buried and rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. You have to believe in the resurrection as part of the Gospel. All right? That doesn't save you, though. But if you don't do it, you'll never find God's saving grace. Salvation. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It leads to salvation. So confessing both your repentance and, and your belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, death, burial, and resurrection, how he died for our sins, for your personal sins that you sinned against him, throwing the old man at the foot of the cross, giving your life to Jesus Christ at the cross, Confessing both of those doesn't save you, but it leads to salvation. If you don't do it, you'll never get saved. And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ask, you have to ask God to save you. Asking God to save you doesn't save you. And people are getting all riled up and, and, and oh, he's teaching. Please bear with me. And by the end of this, if you still don't want to believe in the true plan of salvation, you still don't understand what I'm saying, then I can't help you. Okay, they that are, and this isn't mocking you, but they that are of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not because you're not of God. They that are of the world, uh, speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. All right. I'm going to throw that out there. But at that point, I can't help you. I can only point with what the scriptures say. Now, open your King James Bible. We're going to go to two places. Hopefully this is a short video. I don't normally do short videos, but hopefully this is a short video. Ephesians chapter 2. Turn to verse 4. We always say Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and 10. How about we go back to 4? Let's go back to, to verse 4. It says here, But God, who is rich in His mercy, His mercy, but rich in mercy, for His great love wherewith He loved us. All right? Salvation is always based off of what God does. God does the saving. Please bear with me. Verse 5, even when we were dead in sins, dead in trespasses and sins, we were under the law of sin and death, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We've sinned against God, and the punishment is someday we're going to wind up in hell. 
Even when we were dead in sins, God, dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. Hath quickened us, but God, who is rich in his mercy, hath quickened us together with Christ. You mean God saved us? God made us alive? By grace are ye saved. Grace is what God does. Repentance is what we're doing to find that grace. Believing in the finished work of Jesus Christ is what we do to find that grace. Confessing both in prayers is what we do to find that grace. And call upon the name of the Lord is what we, and asking God to save us is what we have to do to find that grace. But grace is what saves us. And these faith, and I, was, I was trying to kick some of these faith alone people because I said, just say it the way the Bible said it, and they couldn't do it. They couldn't stick with what the Bible says to save their life, to find God's grace. They've got to keep making out to be something they do that saves them. Verse 6, And hath raised us up together, and hath raised us, but God, who is rich in mercy, hath raised us up together, Remember, this is all one sentence. Together, and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. It's God that do it, that does it. No, 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 it's faith alone. Our faith is what saves us. No, it's God that saves us. Through faith. Verse 7, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace. God's. And his kindness towards us, through Christ Jesus, the sacrifice of his Son on the cross. Then we get to verse 8. For by grace are you saved. It's God's, what God's doing that saves us. God does the saving. For by grace are you saved through faith. Once again, you have to do these things. You have to repent. If you, want to, you have to go through repentance if you want to find God's grace. You have to go through the belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross if you want to find God's grace. You have to go through uh, confessing both in prayer. That faith, if you want to find God's grace. You have to go through humbling yourself and asking a God that you didn't believe in before, but now you believe He exists. Faith. You have to humble yourself and ask Him to save you. If you want to find that grace. And I've said it before, it's the next part here says, and that not of yourselves. When you take faith alone, you make it of yourselves. It's something you did that saved you. And they can't stand that because all I said was, is, say it the Bible way. For by grace are you saved through faith. They can't do it. Why? Because they've never gone through faith to find God's grace. They've never had God save them. They never looked at God and said, God, save me. Okay? They think they can earn it with their faith. And I was part of this false system of easy believism. Faith alone. No changed life. A repent Remember, faith alone is a repentless gospel. That's nowhere in the scripture. Faith alone. Nowhere in the scripture. Through faith. It's God's grace that saves. That not of yourselves. They've turned faith into something they're doing. They, it's something that they're doing that saves them. Now, it says also, it is a gift of God. And Paul says that gift is a free gift. I don't have that verse down here, but it's in here. It's a free gift. Maybe one of the brethren can put it in the comment section. Okay? When Paul says that gift is a free gift. It is a free gift. Okay? But God's grace, it's through His Son. There was a sacrifice. There was a cost. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. There was a cost to God's grace. God's grace isn't 100% free. There was a cost. His Son on the cross. What Jesus Christ had to go through. I look at the cross and go, Lord, I deserve that. You went through that for me. I deserve that. These faith alone people never come to that point. They'll say it, but it's not heartfelt. It's just something they've been taught to say. Organized religion. Their social club. It's up here, but it's never down here. It, that grace that's a free gift to me, the salvation of eternal life, that's a free gift to me, that grace, it cost God the Father, His Son on the cross, so that I could go to heaven, that I can be reconciled to the Father. Then you get to verse 9, not of works, lest any man should boast. Not of works. 
So there's two things. You have people today trying to turn faith into works, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of yourselves. They're trying to make it still of themselves. Then you have people that are flat out trying to get you back under the Levitical laws, the Old Testament, in order to get saved. You have to earn salvation. You have to merit salvation. You've got to be worthy of salvation. What, we, what I teach, and a lot of the good, Bible-believing, God-fearing men who are still preaching the true plan of salvation, we're not saying we're worthy. We're doing the opposite. We're saying we're not worthy. And there's nothing I can do to earn salvation or merit salvation. But with faith alone, what they're teaching is they're taking repentance out, trying to prevent people from truly getting saved and born again. And they're trying to make you feel good about your faith. You've earned it with your faith. And they'll come back and go, oh, what does the Bible actually say? Stop adding to the scriptures. And they keep adding to the scriptures. Verse 10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. We're his workmanship. God saves us. God takes that old man that we threw at the foot of the cross, giving our life to Jesus Christ at the cross. He took that old man, crucified him, buried him, and he gave us a new man, the new birth, the new creature in Christ Jesus, the new man, the new woman for the sister in Christ. For we are his workmanship, the changed life that is guaranteed to come after salvation. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works that God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So this is what I've been pushing and pushing. And, and there's, there's some false brethren out there. There's some brethren that get a little they're confused. I really don't get what you're saying. Okay, the Lord put it on my heart. I was talking to this sister in Christ. You want to know a good example of what I'm saying? Turn to Matthew. Turn to Matthew 14. Matthew 14, 28. Now if you know this story... They're on the, uh, uh, Peter and the apostles, they're all in the boat, and they're rowing, there's a huge storm, and they're rowing, they're rowing, and Jesus stayed behind to, to send the crowds away. He went up in the mountain to pray a little bit, and he looks down, and he sees them rowing against the, the storm and the wind and everything, it's t tempestuous, and he goes down there, and he starts walking on the water, and that's where we're at here. He's walking on the water, and they see him, I'll throw that part in, they see him, and they get scared. All the people see him. Now look at this, verse 28. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if, Bible if, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. And we've done a lot of studies, a lot of brethren have done the studies, but they've missed a crucial point here. Walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, when he stopped, took his eyes off Jesus, looked to the left, looked to the right. Sins of the flesh, worldliness, and boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when, and when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. Now you say, what point are you making here? Back up a little bit. Let's look at this. Peter, when he started to sink, the doubt was as he looked to the left and he looked to the right and he started getting fearful of the world and didn't believe that, hey, he could walk on water. If thou be Jesus, bid me to walk on the water. That's the doubt part. But let's look at this. He says, he's beginning to sink. He cried saying, Lord, save me. In other words, he believed, he had faith that God could save him. Jesus Christ could save him. And he called with his mouth and he asked him to save him. Now, did asking, did asking Jesus to save him, is that, did that save him? No. Did he, his belief that Jesus could save him save him? No. What actually saved him? Now, if he didn't do those two things, he might not have gotten saved. But what actually saved him? Verse 31, And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him. What saved Peter? Jesus Christ saved him. Let that sink in, brother, says Christ. That's what I'm talking about. He had to call out and believe that Jesus could save him, and he had to ask Jesus to save him. But Jesus is the one that stretched forth his hands, grabbed him, caught him, pulled him up out of the world, 
and put them on the boat. You know, spirit for, our, for our teachings. He pulled them out of the world. That's what he did to me. He pulled me out of the world and saved me and put me on the boat that's heading for glory. But it was God Almighty, God the Father, and His Son, Jesus Christ, manifest in the flesh, that saved us. Be careful, brothers and sisters Christ. I just keep pushing. The true plan of salvation keeps getting attacked. It gets attacked. It gets attacked. And some of the brethren are getting weary of defending it. And they start compromising. And they start taking repentance out. They start taking prayer out. And now they've got a false gospel. God does the saving. But if you want God to save you, you have to come to Him on His terms. You have to come to Him in biblical repentance, having sorrow in your heart for your personal sins that you've sinned against Him. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrows of the world worketh death. Godly sorrow, sorrow towards God. For what? Your sins. For all of sin comes short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death. There's none that doeth good, no, not one. There's none righteous, no, not one. O wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from this body of death, the law of sin and death? Jesus Christ. But you have to come to the cross in true biblical repentance. The Bible says, God is nigh unto them that have a broken heart, and saveth such that be of a contrite spirit. Except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. God is not willing that any should repent, uh, perish, but that all should come to repentance. Preaching to the Jew first, and then all to the, also to the Gentiles. This is Paul. Repentance towards God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. You have to come to repentance, and that happens here. It's not a change of mind. It's not going from unbelief to belief. These are all lies about repentance that Satan and his ministers use. It's actually a change of heart, not a change of mind. That change of heart is you went from loving your sins, having no problem with your sins, to now you're sorry for sinning against God. And you fear God for where he's going to send you, hell. And you deserve to go to hell. And that's when God turns you to the cross again and says, Hey, I made a way for you to go to heaven. Believe on my son, the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. That's the second step. You have to go through these steps. You have to believe how he died, that the blood that was shed is God the Father's blood. Not a, a lowercase g, God the Son's blood. It is the Son of God. God the Father's blood, God the Father manifests in the flesh, that it's His blood that is shed on the cross. And that blood can wash your sins away. His sacrifice. And your sorrow is magnified from the first step, gets magnified when you look at the cross, and it's now no longer, oh, Jesus died for the sins of the world. He, he died for everyone's sins, and he, we're all sinners. No, it gets magnified because it's, you come to the cross in repentance. It's personal. And you come to the cross going, He did that for me? He died for my sins? He was buried and he rose again the third day, proving that he is God? The Bible says confess both in prayer. Okay, we talk about the verse, uh, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And it goes back to talking about how they're not ashamed. you got to confess both in prayer to show you're not ashamed of what you did. It wasn't a fluke. It wasn't you were just in a Babel building, got caught up in the emotions, and just said what they wanted you to see. You didn't just say what your parents wanted you to say, you know, and everything. You confess both in prayer to God. And say, Lord, I'm not ashamed. I don't repent of repenting. Remember? For godly sorrow work with repentance. Uh, work with repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. I don't repent of repenting. I don't repent of my belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed. Lord, I'm a dirty, rotten, filthy, low-down, no-good sinner. You come to God in prayer. That's where your prayer life starts. I'm a dirty, rotten, filthy, low-down, no-good sinner on my way to hell, and I deserve to go to hell for sinning against you, Lord. And it's only by your grace, Lord, only by your sacrifice of your Son on the cross that your blood was shed on the cross, God, and washed my sins away. Only that blood can wash my sins away. Then the fourth step is, whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Lord, save me. When you take something without asking, that's called stealing. Period. 
You take something without asking that you don't deserve. I don't deserve salvation. So you have people today who, when they just take it without asking, they're saying they deserved it. They've earned it. That's why I'm against this uh, faith alone garbage. And the prayerless gospel, the repentless gospel, the prayerless gospel, it's all garbage. They're saying they've earned it. When you sit there in prayer and you ask God to save you, you're asking for something that's not yours. You didn't earn it, but you desperately need it. And if you are, you know, humble and you humble yourself and you desperately need it, you're going to ask for it. What keeps people from asking for it? Pride or the deception that they've earned it. You have to humble yourself and say, Lord, save me. Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. I don't deserve to go to heaven. I deserve to go to hell. Oh, Lord, I need you. Save me. Please save me. You have to ask. And God will look at the heart. And he has with a lot of us, brother, says Christ, with amazing testimonies. God looks at the heart and goes, You're, you came to me you came to me on my terms. You followed my steps through faith. Remember Ephesians 8, 2, 8, 9? Through faith, you followed my steps. I'm going to save you. God does the saving. He reaches down and grabs us, pulls us out of the world, and gives us a new life and puts us in the boat. And we need to start heading to glory. We need to start working towards that blessed hope and the judgment seat of Christ. Start being a living witness and a verbal witness. Made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, redemption. We now belong to Him, and we're on a new path, new life, new creature in Christ Jesus. God's the one that does that. Created in Christ. He does the creating. Giving us the new life. It's guaranteed after salvation. And I've said this. It's just something new that God started putting on my heart to say it this way. Two, when you see someone who's truly saved and born again, two steps forward, one step back. A false convert... He's still running 100 miles an hour in the same direction he was before he got saved. He's not on the boat. He's still in the water with the world. And he's still trying to go the wrong direction, 100 miles an hour. Someone who's truly saved in Morgan, they might struggle. Two steps forward, backpedal one step. Two steps forward, backpedal one step. But you notice there's still that one step. He's still, it's just so slow sometimes. I was, for me, two, first two years of my life, Struggling with the flesh, struggling with this world, trying to get this in my head and my heart and trying to do things God's way, sanctification, and trying to figure out and learn what God's way is, what He has for me, how I'm supposed to live as, as a person in Christ, Christian today, a, one of His children, okay? how I'm supposed to treat this body, how I'm supposed to treat my brothers and sisters in Christ, how I'm supposed to treat the world. You learn all this stuff. Two steps forward. Back, one step back, two step forward, one step back. Sometimes 50 steps forward, three steps back. When you get to being very mature, maybe your steps back or, or get fewer. Like, it doesn't happen that often. But in the book of John, 1 John, it says, if we say we have no sin, we're liars. And the truth isn't in us. I'm a, I'm a sinner saved by God's grace. I'm still a sinner, but I just don't sin as often as I used to. I'm doing more steps forward than I ever am doing a step back. As you mature and get closer to God through His Word and farther from this world. Remember, you're to bring, uh, make not provisions for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. You're supposed to bring your thoughts into subjection to the beings of Christ. You're supposed to bring this flesh into subjection to the beings of Christ. And God teaches you how to do it. You're supposed to keep the world at bay. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. We're called out of the world to be a light to this dark world. The changed life. So, brothers, it's been a little bit longer than I want it to be, but I just God showed me that. It's like with Peter. Jesus reached down his hand and pulled him up. That's what saved him. But this is Christ. We need to stand for the true plan of salvation. And if you come across this channel and you've been deceived in a repentless gospel, and a prayerless gospel, get saved today. I'm looking at what's going on in the world. We don't have much time. We're going to go home. I believe we're going to, we, could go, we could go home any day now. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Get your heart right with the Lord God Almighty and get saved His way. I'm going to end this with grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you. Remember, true love is preaching the truth.
and standing for the truth. My love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.